Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. I've been working on Educa's 42,000 piece jigsaw puzzle titled Around the World. I finished the first bag and released three videos for it as well as I did an unboxing. I'm currently working on the second bag so I'll leave links to all those videos in the description below. Now, I had thought that I had already released this video. It's a full time lapse of the first bag, just using my GoPro wide angle overhead footage. But lo and behold, I have not. So I've re-recorded the voiceover and I'll put this up and I hope you enjoy. A few things to note, the sorting took about, what was it, eight hours? And at first I had sorted using just one of my boards and I quickly realized I needed two boards. So people have asked me the dimensions of these boards. They're each 1200 millimeters by 900 millimeters side by side. So that makes 1200 by 1800 is the working area that I'm using. The boards to have a bit more firmness and sturdiness, I think they're 4.5 millimeters thick. So they're still movable easily enough individually for myself but have enough weight to them so they don't slide around too, too much on my table. I realized though, looking through all this footage that I've missed, or I think I forgot to turn on the GoPro for some of the footage and I must have only captured it on my Canon camera. For example, here, I already have all that border assembled. Now I know I filmed myself assembling that border, but I couldn't find the GoPro footage of it. So sorry about that. You can definitely see at the top how much trouble I had with that top border because the sky, false fits, repeated cut pattern, similar colors. I think that's gonna be the same issue I have for every bag in this jigsaw puzzle. Now just to revisit this jigsaw puzzle, 42,000 pieces is divided into seven bags of 6,000 pieces each. And I will admit, it's a, it's a lot to work with. It is. I think I definitely prefer my max is maybe 2,000 pieces. In the sense that if I did a 6,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, I'd love for it to be complete at the end and be fully done. Then I'd be like, wow, okay, I finished 6,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. But here, I feel like I finished 6,000 pieces. Okay, I got to open the next bag of 6,000 pieces. It, it's a bit overwhelming, I'm not going to lie. Whereas when I did the Graphica 54,000 piece travel around art, 2,000 piece per bag, even though there were 27 bags, it didn't feel as overwhelming opening a bag of, of 2,000 pieces. So I think, you know, I definitely prefer larger jigsaw puzzles that are subdivided into smaller bag counts. It just is also easier to work with. You can see how I have this huge board. I'm having to lean and to reach. My back is, <laughs> I'm not doing it any favors, that's for sure. But overall, I mean, it's doable, but oh, it's, it's a lot. I do have a 6,000 piece jigsaw puzzle in my to-do pile from Graphica. It's the Vintage Travel. I've shown it on a shopping haul recently. I can't wait to do it because that one will be a full journey. You're going to see how I glue the jigsaw puzzle and I'm going to bring it in to have it professionally framed. And I've already spoke to my framer. He said that I could film the whole process. So we'll do a little interview, a tour. We'll set up my GoPro. And yeah, I haven't ever actually seen one of my jigsaw puzzle framed, so I don't know how they do it. I just drop them off and pick them up, but that will be lots of fun to do. And although that's a 6,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, and to tell you the truth, the image I do believe will be a lot more difficult than these images in the Educa puzzle, I just know that I'm going to love it and I can't wait to see the finished uh, product up on the wall next to my antique world map once I get that back from the big jigsaw puzzle display. So now you can see I've tried to work again further on that upper edge part but obviously it's still not fully connecting. I think I it took forever to do but it was fine. I did use some pieces of paper there to build some sections and try to slide them into position. Of course this is sped up. What is this sped up? Um, 10 times speed. So it looks like it's quite easily that I just slide the place, pieces into place, but 
it is tricky. This jigsaw puzzle is very, very loose fitting, very crumbly. It has a perfect grid cut, like rows and columns. Every so many columns, it's slightly shifted off from the others, but yeah, it's very difficult to move even two, four pieces without them falling apart. But what can I do? I have reached out to Educa and voiced my, my thoughts and concerns and wondered why they printed and cut the jigsaw puzzle in this way. I'm still waiting back to hear from them. I have heard, you know, they've received my messages, they forwarded my messages, but I'm still waiting. Now, you just saw how I went from working on the Golden Gate Bridge and then that whole mountain area was completely built. I'm sorry, I cannot find the GoPro footage for that. I believe that I did a close up and I forgot to start the GoPro as well. But for the second bag, I'm trying to make sure to always turn on all my cameras. I already forgot to turn on the Canon at one point to get the close ups, but I'll do the best I can. There's so much going on when you're trying to decide which area to work on next, what to capture as close ups, you know, try to make sure you get the full overhead, make sure the lighting is okay. But I like the way that it's shown that it's all coming together here. It feels so empty to start, but once you start filling things in, it's really quite nice. Every so often, this is what I'm going to recommend to people who work on a large scale jigsaw puzzle, or maybe any jigsaw puzzle. If you do a full sort and you have a pile of miscellaneous unknown pieces, every so often after you've finished building an area, go through that pile because some stuff may jump out at you. And I love the feeling of finding one of those unknown pieces and figuring out where it goes. Um, last night on bag two of this jigsaw puzzle, I was looking at a piece, very distinct piece, and it was the door entryway to the Chichen Itza temple at the top. I did not know that at the time though. And I said, this piece is very distinct. It has to go somewhere. Like this is driving me crazy. I get fixated on a piece. Do you do that? Do you get fixated that you're like, I need to figure out where this piece goes. I even had my hubby come over and look at the poster. And I said, look, this piece has to go somewhere. It's driving me nuts. He couldn't figure it out either. And then I just took it and maybe just asking him to figure out where it was. I went, oh, it goes right there. And <laughs> I figured it out. So every so often go through your pile of miscellaneous unknown pieces because as you're working on the jigsaw puzzle, areas will remain in your brain and you'll remember things and things will just finally come together and you'll see where things go. And then your miscellaneous pile doesn't get too, too big. Of course, as I'm building the jigsaw puzzle, I'm adding more pieces to that miscellaneous pile. But yeah, so I found a few last night and I was so pleased. And then also I get a bit frustrated in the sense that, oh, it was so obvious that that piece went there. Why couldn't I figure that out sooner? You'll also notice for this jigsaw puzzle, what I've been doing a lot of what I call the greenery. So trees, grass, leaves, plants, I kind of leave till later on. I actually had to sort by piece shape and just try to fill in the greenery because a lot of it is very similar, at least Per, per panel of jigsaw puzzle. And of course here I'm at the sky and I sorted further by color. And then eventually you'll see that I sort by shape. And it took a long time to do this sky. I'm not gonna lie. It's very pretty seeing it all come together here. At the time it kind of was a bit frustrating. I had that crazy false fit with some purpley uh, pieces. And I didn't realize I'm not sure if they'll even show up here on camera, but I had two pieces closer to that bottom corner purpley in place, but then they didn't actually go there. They just, they were perfect false fits because the cut repeats itself. They fit in there perfectly, but the tone of the purple was just slightly darker and standing up, looking over top, looking at an angle, I realized, no, I think they go on the other side. Yeah, so you got to be careful with repeated cut patterns and things like sky, water, grass. 
maybe overall it wouldn't have been too noticeable, but I knew it was there. So I, <laughs> I couldn't leave it alone. I had to figure it out. And finally I did. So here I'm putting in the last few pieces of sky. Oh, it was such a relief to figure it all out and finally get it all done. But even here I've sorted by piece shape, by color and putting in oh, the last piece. Just lovely. And of course you, you gotta rub down the puzzle. Here's a little close up. You can see all the different animals that they had in this section of the jigsaw puzzle. Very Canada, US dominant, North America, I would say. There's Parliament Hill. Remember the other videos that I've done for this jigsaw puzzle, the voiceovers are in depth where I discuss the landmarks, the signs, the animals, the buildings, the skyscrapers. There's the archway, for example. So if you want more detail and information about all that, you know, check out those links below, enjoy those videos. I'll keep crunching along, working on the second bag. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. And I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao.